Another reason why we have such healthy wildlife today is because we protect that wildlife with a combination of game laws and professionals who enforce those laws. They're conservation officers. Let's find out what they do with our junior investigator, Jillian. Take it away, Jillian. Hey, you two. Please, could you get together? Why is there a need for your job? We have a lot of laws, statutes, regulations that protect our natural resources. But sometimes the laws aren't enough, so that's where we come into play as conservation officers. We're ensuring that everybody is following the same rules so that we have fair hunting, fishing, trapping practices for everyone. So the majority of the hunters, anglers, trappers that we contact are trying to obey the law. When we contact them in the field, they're happy to see us, they're happy to talk to us, and we're happy to talk to them. We get really good at it. But there are those people that, and it's a minority of people, that don't follow the laws and regulations that we have in place. It's unfortunate, but that's why our job is necessary. What special law enforcement training do you need? So we have to go to a regular law enforcement academy. Um, I went to an academy for 16 weeks. And then when you complete the police academy, we have our own six-week game and fish recruit school that we put our recruits through. And that includes learning the laws and regulations, going through reality-based training scenarios, and other things that are specific to our job and what we do. In reality-based training, we do some pretty cool stuff. We go through scenarios that we may encounter in the field. Um, some of those we get shot at with kind of like paintball guns, they're called sim rounds, so it's not real, but it's, it, it kind of hurts a little bit, stings. It's all types of different scenarios. Maybe it's uh, an individual that doesn't have a fishing license, or maybe it's just an individual that's doing absolutely nothing wrong, and these are all real scenarios that you could encounter as a game warden or as a conservation officer in the field, and we want to make sure our young officers are prepared for those scenarios. I don't really know that there is a, a major difference between game warden and conservation officer. Yeah, it's more of just a perception of what the public thinks when they hear game warden. They think of somebody that's just enforcing game laws. And while that's a big percentage of what we do, we do so many other things that involve conservation or revolve around conservation. Yeah, we do a lot of like OHV patrol to make sure people aren't driving four-wheelers off of dirt roads, things like that. Wildlife management projects, right. fisheries management projects. We do a lot of information education, public outreach. Yeah. Uh, we teach hunter education. So really all wrapped up, we're protecting so many different parts of an ecosystem. We're protecting the wildlife. We're helping conservationists make sure that they have wildlife for future generations. Right now it's hunting season and I spend a lot of time out in the woods checking those hunters, trying to keep them honest, uh, make sure that they have their carcass tags properly notched and filled out after they've harvested something, make sure that they have a license to be hunting, that they're utilizing the correct weapon type for their hunt. And licenses are, are very important to us because that's ultimately what funds our agency. It's that money that sportsmen spend on the license that allows us to complete the cycle of conservation and put that funding back into the field, back into the fisheries work, the wildlife work, and the law enforcement work that we do. And that's conservation for everybody to enjoy. Well, it's also fishing season right now. In fact, it's always fishing season. We're always out trying to check anglers in between checking hunters in the fall. So one of the first things we look for is that anglers have licenses. And that's important because it's those dollars spent on fishing licenses that allow us to stock our rivers and streams and lakes with fish. And if we didn't have those license dollars, we wouldn't be able to fund our fish hatcheries. So for example, the stream behind us, the bag limit is, is five rainbow trout. You can only catch five. And that's because those trout are grown in a fish hatchery in this state, and there's only so many. And so we have to regulate the number that people can take. If they take more than that, there's not a, enough for everybody else. And really, five trout's probably plenty for dinner. Yeah, five trout's a pretty good meal. What is the most challenging part of your career? So there are some unique challenges to this job. Um, we're oftentimes in areas with no radio coverage, no cell phone coverage. Backup could be an hour, if not more, away. 
by ourselves and going into camps and situations where everybody's armed or at least has a knife on them. And, and there's probably going to be more than one of them. And those are the situations that we have to face. But there's a lot more to this job than just checking hunters and anglers. Yeah, it's, it's very common for us to deal with interactions between wildlife and humans. Um, we call that depredation. And in a world where we have so many humans living in it and our populations of wildlife are very healthy, these types of problems are very common. Some examples of that could include elk, elk in a hayfield, um, destroying uh, a farmer's crops, or... Bears in dumpsters. Bears in dumpsters, bears in homes. Bears in homes. Um, Raccoons getting into your doggy door and eating your dog's food. Foxes under my shed, uh, bobcat in my backyard. Bobcat eating my chickens, I yeah. deal with that one a lot. So to help minimize these conflicts, we do a lot of education about how to safely interact with wildlife. Yeah, so that's one of the most important things is educating people that may not have that much experience dealing with wildlife. They've never had that bear in their yard before, or, or maybe they just moved to an area that has mountain lions in it. So we want to educate them on how not to attract those animals, how not to have those negative interactions with those animals. If I wanted to be a conservation officer, what would I have to study in college? You might want to think about studying uh, wildlife, science, biology, criminal justice. We accept a wide range of four-year degrees. I also think it's super important if you want to be a conservation officer, get involved in hunting and fishing and trapping. Become a hunter, become an angler, become a trapper, and start experiencing the outdoors and some of these things in nature that you're going to experience as part of this career. And if that's something that you're passionate about, something that you love, then hey, this is maybe just the right job for you. So if you're thinking about being a conservation officer, you better think school is cool. Because you're going to need a four-year degree. So besides the education, there's some personalities that really match this job. And I think that's something that kind of comes from your soul, something that leads a person to want to be outside and be in the outdoors and enjoy that. That's the person that's good at this job. And that's how you be a conservation officer.